Hey there, Segudo Golfers. Tom Segudo here, and we are playing golf today. Get excited. You know, it's just a perfect day out here at Litchfield Country Club, and we're doing this the way that most golfers would do this, going out stone cold turkey, no warm up. We're gonna have some fun. Good strike. Push draw. Oh, that's a good spot right down the middle. It's a good day. It's a good day to have a great day. Let's go to the ball. A little bit of a pull, dead pull. Oh, ball. Come back, please. Contact was so crispy though. For chipping, I take Patrick Reed's advice. Find a wedge that you love and stick with it. So I like to use a 52 because it's very consistent for me. Today I'm putting, doing the Dave Stockman approach. I really like to feel the putt. When you have greens that are aerated, just don't think too much about it. Give yourself a two putt max in a hole. It's not really fair. You're not really sure what the speed's gonna be with all the sand on the green. So I kind of left that one short. So the Dave Stockton approach, you really just, no practice stroke. You're looking at the hole while you're, aim you're not even getting down to aim it, you just hit it. I call it the mini golf approach, look at that. So a little bogey there, but not a whole lot of thinking to knock in that five foot putt. Some of you guys get over it and it's like you're trying to do high level physics and geometry calculations. No need to overdo it. Make life easier on yourself. Your brain's doing a lot of work behind the scenes. And that's why I love to do visualization. Stand behind the ball, looking at the hole. And my brain, while I'm not even thinking about this, it's going on automatically. My brain is putting together the whole putt. Your subconscious is doing all the work. You should be happy with that because you ever wonder why you putt so well in mini golf? It's because your subconscious does the work for you. You're like, oh, I gotta hit it at that brick. It's gonna bounce off the brick, go under the flying monkey, windmill, and then into the hole. <laughs> and it does. It does exactly what you want it to do. Why is that? It's not magic. It's your subconscious doing the work for you. So coming up here to a par five, and some of you remember this par five from the vlogs in the past. There's an electrical box straight ahead. I want it to start a little right of that and come back to it. Oh, that felt good. Look at it, right back to the box. Oh, that felt great. That is why we play golf. That is why we play golf. So good old golfers, that feeling never, never gets old. That's why I get so excited about teaching golf to y'all. And I've been wanting to make this video for so long. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all of your support. It has been incredible to get to know the Segudo golfers out there. Also to know that there's so many of you who enjoy my weird sense of humor. And then I know that y'all have a great sense of humor too. So there's that fun community. What a community we've built around getting crispier golf shots. The Segudo golf mission has never changed. From day one, even before YouTube got big, the mission was always to take the average golf score, the average golfers out there like you, take it from 100s and 90s and bring it into the low 80s because you're gonna have so much more fun. And you know what you need to do to get there? You just gotta do a few things. 
it's not like you've got to train like an Olympic athlete. You just got to do a few things. I talk about this all the time on the channel. I help you get this in my Segudo.golf online golf school. You get the crispiest strikes ever. It's so cool to see golfers all over the world playing their best golf. Yeah, you should be, you should be pumped up too because you're part of this mission. Everyone who subscribed to this channel is part of the solution to playing better golf, to hitting it crispy. Oh, that was a bad swing. That was a total fart. Oh well, life happens. You know what just happened there? Life happened. <laughs> Thin, putrid smelling golf shot. So, that didn't put me out of the hole. Came over steep a little on it. I hate that move. I got, I fight that from time to time. My old, my old self. It's like my old self wants to come back. Hey, you remember me? Remember me? And I'm like, no, go away. Go away, old swing. You pathetic old swing. Go away from me now. I'm having fun without you in my life. And then it says, no, you need to see me at least once a week. And then it comes out. Gonna come out a little hot out of this lie because it's just got a little bit of a cushion behind it, so I don't want to jack it up. I want to be just short of the hole. Choke down a little bit. Slight, sl slight side hill. Back in my stance to catch ball first. Good swing. It's going a little left because of the rough. That's about hole high, just a little left. I'll take it. Birdie putt. Ball. Oh, that sand's really eating it up. So in situations like this, I'd say give yourself a two putt max because of the sand. It's not really accurate to what you would be doing normally. All right, so I'm gonna give myself a par there because of the conditions. Don't beat yourself up when the conditions aren't quite right. The pros play in perfect conditions. Two putt max when the greens have been worked on. Stop and look before entering, okay. Crossing the street. Toughest hole in the golf course. It is a narrow par four straight, about 430, 440. Tee shot, incredibly important here. Par is a great score. Oh, it felt great. That's right where I want it. That's, oh, that's slotted. That sound never gets old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know that I get pumped up seeing and hearing crispy golf shots. I'll typically say on the lesson tee, that sound never gets old because it truly doesn't get old. Why do you play golf? Why do you keep playing golf? Because you want to hit more crispy golf shots. I'll thin the win. That's going to be really good, actually. Come back. Birdie putt. Sloping way down, a little bit to the left. Be good, baby. Bump, bumpy rod. And I would typically um, wipe this ball down. Look at that vicious sand. Saved by the two putt max. <laughs> oh, that didn't feel good at all. Uh, poop. Had the distance, but it was a push. That's right where I wanted. Ah, 
Actually, it's very straight. <laughs> All right, so brief intermission while we're waiting to hit this next shot. Right now in my game, I'm working on getting too much of my active lower body wants to kick in. I want to throw the hips at it. That causes big hooks, but I also have this issue where sometimes I want to hit from the top. I know it sounds familiar, right? I talk about not doing that in all of the YouTube videos. That, that move, I despise that move. This, and so I need to get this motion going on to get the club shallow and correctly. There's a couple things I'm doing. One of the things is good tempo. I find that my tempo was extremely fast and I watched the older vlogs, I mean the older golf vlogs, and I was just like, that's so fast. It's okay, the ball is going to go farther when you swing slower with good tempo. It doesn't mean that I'm not hitting with the wrath of God, I need to clarify that one. I'm still hitting it, but a lot of the power is effortless because it's built in to having a good path like this. So you have good path, leads to naturally more power. And because I'm not, I'm not doing too much with the lower half, I'm able to speed up the club even more through, in, through impact. And that leads to great feeling shots. Part five, slight dog leg to the left. Good smooth tempo, smooth swing, in control. Oh, that felt great. That's an enchilada. Wind moved a little to the right, but that, man, that felt great. Driver and the three wood are feeling good today. Just a couple thin irons. Some irons that were less than satisfactory, but I can't complain. That is feeling great. Subscribe if you want to be part of the mission. Part of this awesome mission to get golfers all over the world shooting in the low 80s. Now, of course, for you golfers who are in the low 80s, I want you to shoot better than that. But I'm talking about the average score. We're moving the average score from 100s to 80s. It can be done. I firmly believe that it can be done. And I want you to comment below if you are one of those golfers who was in that situation. I know there's tons of you out there because I want the world to know that this is something that you can do. There is hope. I see it in the Segudo.golf online golf school. These golfers are literally shaking with joy. Like a month prior, they were in the mid 90s and like a month later, they're shooting the best round of their life. They shoot an 84, 82 and the joy is so intense. That's the mission. Subscribe if you want to be part of that mission. Life is far too short to play bad golf. You get one shot at life. This is one of those times where you're like, I absolutely nuked that ball. I absolutely nuked you and you only went carried yardage. My ego says pull out three wood, but the smart me says pull out the seven iron. There's no sense in me trying too hard for an eagle. There's no sense in that. 233, I only need a 133 shot, not a seven iron. I want 100 yards, I want to make a birdie. Oh, I want the three wood. Sneaking, sneaking, uh, sneak attack by the three wood there. Just sit in the bag saying, hit me, hit me. Okay, I'll do that. Oh, I hit it straight. It didn't hook. Oh, hit that tree and drop. Hit that tree and drop. Eh, you know, I hit a solid straight and there's a pond over there. Great course management talking yourself out of playing it safe. I don't know how to describe it. It's that feeling of, yeah, I hit that great. And then it's the feeling of, oh, I hit it in the water, but I hit it great. Smart play was the pitching wedge, and then I'll have another wedge into the green. The dumb play was what I just did, but I do it all the time, so it's not dumb. I've been on the green here, but it's just not the high percentage shot. Wait, maybe this ball is safe. I don't know. Let's not get our hopes down. It's lost. Ball's a little bit semi-buried now. That was a great drop. Oh. 
All right, we got a par putt. That was not too bad considering the buried lie. And we just put the ball a little back in the stance to get the club descending into the ground. You should get out of the buried lie pretty easily. There's nothing easy about a buried lie, but it's easier than if you were to play it normal. Course management mistake there by choosing the three wood, but you know, you don't watch me on YouTube to watch me lay up. I gotta make sure I hit it firm enough. It could be pretty straight when I hit it firm. Yeah, baby! Yeah! How about that course management mistake? That feels like a birdie. <laughs> that feels like a birdie. Yeah, so course management mistake turned into awesomeness. You can make a few mistakes out there with the long game if your short game is really solid. One of the PGA Tour guys, they're doing like mental coaching and all that stuff. One of the things they said to do is don't get excited. Don't have a big a mood swing out there. You must keep yourself perfectly balanced mood the whole round, whether you hit a bad shot or a great shot. All right, I'm half in agreement with that philosophy. Where I agree is don't get upset over the bad shots. But I disagree in that you should stay level-headed the whole time. You need to get fired up on a good shot. You need to feel like you're playing some fun golf. There's, there's no doubt that when you start doing happy things, like you believe, you believe in yourself and what you can do, and you get excited, your body is processing, your brain processes dopamine. It's just that happy feeling. All right, par four, dog leg left, 90 degrees, middle of the fairway would be ideal. Oh, that was socked. Oh yeah. Cash and checks. That was socked. What happened there in the last hole, right? Let's talk about this. I had an excellent drive. Come up there, I'm a little undecided. Not a little undecided, I just completely went against my game plan by my three wood was looking at me and said, come on, you know you wanna hit me. And I was like, yeah, you know, it's all right hit you into the water. Most golfers would say, it's over. It's over, I'm dead, I'm done, I'm fried. Just shoot me now. Now, you have to view the next shot as the potential for you to hit the next best shot of your life. You say, oh, I've hit one bad one. Well, there's so many other blessings you could count in life, such as the fact that you're even playing golf is a blessing. You've got the time off to play golf. And that the next shot could be your best shot, not your worst shot. If you're thinking the next shot's gonna be your worst shot or you're done, trust me, I've been there. I've been negative Nelly. But it doesn't help because you're just riding yourself into despair. No, I walk up the next tee, or I walk up the next shot there. Okay, what do I got? I got a 56 yard chip sh or pitch shot. What are we gonna do? We're gonna hit, hit it as close as I can to the hole. All right, next shot, putt. What are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna read the green. I'm gonna stick to my routine. I'm gonna hit the putt. And the outcome is it's gonna be what it's gonna be. But I know my outlook is not the outcome. My outlook is not attached to the outcome. If you think about just the result, You'll be tying your happiness to the result. So when you do bad, you'll be miserable. When you do good, you'll be happy. But the miserable stuff is gonna weigh down the happy. And that's why a lot of golfers can be miserable at times. If you think you blew it, you've already blown it. You are what you think you are. If I think, well, I've got no chance, then I've got no chance. But if you think, this could be my next best shot of my life, yeah, that's what that is. I'll be on the stick, baby. Oh, get in the hole. What did I just say? Next shot could be your best shot. Keep that outlook. Oh, that was cool. What was my outlook on that shot? Next shot could be your best shot. What did I do? 
I stuck to my routine. I didn't change anything. Didn't attach the outcome. Didn't attach my mood to my outcome, even though I get excited about the good shots. Use that rule. Get excited about the good and just chuck out the bad. You're gonna hit bad shots. I've already hit two or three or four bad shots today. But it's not killing me. I'm still alive. I'm still smiling. We've got a birdie putt. If you're not smiling, playing golf, you need a different hobby. Or you need to improve yourself to where you can smile playing golf. So good old golfers, what do you think? Comment in the live chat right now. I think it's straight in. What do you think? Straight in. Thanks for the update. Hit it firm in bumpy greens. Birdie, baby! Get excited about the good, block out the bad. Yeah! Oh, went a little left. I really yanked that. Left side of the green. All right. Going for the middle green has its perks because I did yank that, like the face just shut. But I've got a chip and a putt. That's all you need to do to shoot in the low 80s and high 70s. If you were to just hit nine greens around, you could shoot low 80s, high 70s. Nine greens in regulation, nine birdie putts per round. And then your short game is decent. Good short game with nine greens hitting around. You're gonna shoot in the 70s or the low 80s. It's proven. You can even have a, a double thrown in there. Get a little right. Not too bad. That's about three or four feet. Good putt, good par, bro. Get a little nervous there. You watch the sand bump in the ball. It's like, oh, come on, go, give it a go, it's all right. I uh, hit a little bit of a pull again. So what you're seeing me do here, I'm working with, the, I'm dancing with who I brought today. I brought a little bit of this pole with the longer clubs, uh, except for the driver, the three iron, it's just been the long irons. The three iron and five iron have been a little stray. I know it's related to my downswing, but I'm out here and I'm playing to score well. So I, I dance with what I have. Sam Sneed talked about that. Oh, I'm at the range, I'm hitting a fade, okay. Well, even though I want to hit a draw, I'll just hit a fade all day. Come back and work on it later and fix it and bring, it, bring my draw back to the course next week. I was struck well. Oh, a little left again. Just got to go to the range and work on that. Yeah, it might be fringe. That was, that was fringe worthy. Uh, Felt really solid. Ball did not behave. It is fringe worthy. Oh no, I hit the fringe. Two putt max only applies when you hit the green. Two putt max for the aerated greens and the dressed greens. Don't go out there saying, Tom told everybody it's two putt max anywhere all the time. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's just for the dressed greens with the sand, for abnormal green conditions, sand like that, or aeration or verticutting, nothing else. Oh, I had to hit that with the wrath of God. Go, baby. Ooh, I hit that hard. Oh, that, oh man, that was cruel and unusual punishment. Should I get, should, can you give that, what, well, you're gonna give me that? I mean, that was, oh, that was dead right off, like that hit the bump. Ah, no, life sometimes isn't fair. We can't always have it our way.
Oh, that felt good. Just went a little left again. Stay off the cart path. I know it's bad over there. Oh, oh, we're good. You know what I'm talking about. There's those holes where you find yourself in the same spot every time, no matter what day it is. It's like there's a magnet over there. With this hole, it was usually the right side. There's a magnet over there. Must have changed the magnets today. By the way, if you're a beginner, you see those tees in front of me? Those are for beginners. Do not be ashamed to play those tees. It's all about your experience. Golf is what you make it. It's 168.8, but it's sitting on a fluffy lie. So I don't want to juice it past that. This green is a little brutal if you miss it. I want an eight iron on this. It's going to fly her out of here. It's going to be beautiful. There's the tug to the left. It's going to be at least a putt. That rough does that to the ball, grips it, closes the face. It helps to hold on to the club face a little bit tighter when you're playing in the rough so the hands don't turn over aggressively. So we go to golfers. What are you seeing back there? Give me a read. My car keys are telling me it's going a little to the right. I had to hit that hard and it's still not enough. Ooh. Unfortunate bogey on the last hole. Three over today. That felt pretty good considering the errant shots. Three over was a good score. That was a lot of fun. So it's a good old golfers. Thanks for tuning in today's golf vlog. I'm making the goal to do more of these this year. It's on my schedule. And they're a lot of fun. You get to see how I would approach the golf course. Maybe your approach is similar to mine. My approach is a balance between fun and strategy. Strategy. Or strategy, not strategy. Oh, this guy's putting. I can't talk to you loud. It's probably for like $5,000. Oh, he hit it. Oh, he's good. His buddy just picked his nose. I mean, his buddy picked the, his buddy didn't pick his friend's nose, but his buddy was picking his own nose. There we go. Golf is what you make it. That's the lesson today. If you choose to be unhappy, or if you are unhappy, that is your choice. So don't go blaming the world for you being unhappy on the golf course. What you should be doing is being happy instead. Don't attach your life to the outcome. If you play bad, it doesn't affect who you are as a person. If you play well, it doesn't affect who you are as a person. And it should just keep, you should just stay happy. If you get too, too mental in this game and be miserable, that's no fun. So that's what I got for you today. Be happy. Don't worry about a thing. Every little thing. It's gonna be all, all right, yeah. So some good old golfers, you know what to do. Go out there, have some, fun, have some fun playing golf. Be happy. If you're looking to play the best golf of your life, check out my online golf school, sagudo.golf. 10 bucks a month, you could be playing the best golf of your life. Thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you in a future rocking episode.